These are devotions for people at a social distance. Today, in my devotions, uh, my thoughts went to uh, one of the more famous parables of Jesus told in Matthew chapter 22, uh, verses 1 to 10. Now, this is the famous story of the great banquet, the great dinner, you know, to which the people are invited and they don't come. And I think we're probably much more familiar with the version of this parable, a little bit different, uh, which is told in the Gospel of Luke, because in the Gospel of Luke, uh, the emphasis is, is, a lot of emphasis is put on the excuses that the people uh, give and the reasons why they don't come. But actually, the Gospel of Matthew does not get into the excuses at, at all. So simply what happens in the Gospel of Matthew is uh, the, the man... Uh, the man who, who is actually a king in this version of the parable um, prepares the banquet, sends out his servants and says, everybody come. And this is the response. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. Well, the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them and killed them. Now, that is a pretty extreme response to an invitation to a banquet, but that's what we are told happened. Now, what's going on in the Gospel of Matthew is probably Matthew's trying to make some comparison with the, with the history of you know, the prophets as messengers of God and all of that. Um, but I can't help, today anyways, I can't help but read this uh, from the point of view of these servants who are, are sent out to do one simple thing that really doesn't seem all that, you know, horrible, and they end up getting beaten and killed for it. I think about that today, especially because yesterday, in the province of Ontario, where I live, um, a new mandate came into effect. And so people who are going into restaurants, into to gyms, into theaters, and similar places have to present proof of vaccination. And I know this is con controversial. Uh, I, I generally think, yes, this is something that's probably necessary at this time, though I'm kind of sad that it had to be necessary. I would, of course, much rather that people voluntarily uh, in greater numbers uh, become vaccinated. But that's not the discussion I necessarily want to get into today. It's simply this, the enforcement, the enforcement of this rule as necessary as it may be, has fallen on who? It has fallen on the same people uh, that uh, many of the very difficult parts of this whole pandemic has fallen on, and that is typically uh, so-called essential workers, low-wage workers, workers who don't have a lot of protections, and they are the ones who are asking for these proof. And they are the ones, at least they're in a few stories coming forward, and I, and I know there will be more who are facing the, the pushback and the abuse, and, and in some cases, we'll probably see some violence, and it just doesn't seem right. You know, from their point of view, they're, they're, doing, they're being called upon to do something um, that is simply necessary in a moment. Uh, but they are the ones who didn't even put this policy in the place, who are not even making the, the, the large part of the profits from these enterprises, but they face the brunt of the negative reactions. And, and that makes me sad. And that makes me worried for them. And that makes me think about all of the anxiety and the worry and perhaps, you know, people who will be quitting their jobs because of these negative experiences that they have. So I simply want to lift up these people who far too often are not valued and are not thought of as we put forward our policies as important as they may be. Lord our God, we lift up uh, low-wage workers today across our society, across our economy, who often bear the brunt of, of um, angry comments, of violence, of hateful comments. Lord, change our priorities so that we look at such people differently and see the true value is in, in, that is in them and protect them as they protect our society. Amen.